the Arlington Redevelopment Board, uh, being supported by ACMI. First on our agenda this evening is a special permit application, uh, number 3511, 11 Water Street. The uh, Massachusetts Patient Foundation Inc. is uh, asking us for permission to open a medical marijuana treatment center. Uh, Chris Lorenti, member of the town, uh, resident of the town, has advised me that he will also be recording this for his own personal uh, use. So if I could have the applicants. Please introduce yourselves. Thank you, Chairman Vanell. My name is Adam Fine. I'm an attorney on behalf of the Massachusetts Patient Foundation. And I want to thank every uh, thank the board, uh, you know, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board for having us here today to present. Um, we have prepared a PowerPoint. Um, hopefully it's not too lengthy or we're trying to be comprehensive um, and really be here to answer any questions uh, that your board may have. Um, also, obviously, we value uh, the input of the public. Um, so please talk. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, feel free to speed us up or slow us down. We're going to quickly, we want to make sure that we get all the information um, to the residents that are on attendance this board um, so you can make an informed decision. Um, before I want to introduce, I just want to let the, the board know who's here today. Um, we have uh, Joseph Lukash, who's the founder of Massachusetts Space Foundation. We have Tony Capacetti, who is a, the engineer, who did a lot of the engineering for the special permit. My uh, associate attorney, uh, Dave Gillian, from our office. Um, and we also have Corey Cutler, who's also a member of the National Space Foundation team. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to, to hand it off, this portion of the presentation, um, to, uh, to Joseph to kind of intru introduce uh, his team and tell you a little bit about his organization. Thank you, Phoebe, Chairman, members of the board. So we're here to be an excellent neighbor for the community. Dispense legal medicine, of the highest degree and highest quality to the residents of the town of Arlington and the surrounding communities. Our emphasis is strictly on patient satisfaction, patient service, and we will do everything in our ability to make sure every patient that comes in is treated with respect and with knowledgeable staff for this medicine. Um, personally, uh, I want to get into why myself and many members of our team, which I'll go through in a second, got into this field. In my family history, uh, there's significant, there's different kinds of genes I have to be aware of. Um, on my mom's side, my grandmother passed away in her 50s of early onset Alzheimer's. And so one of the real potential uses for this medicine is to treat neurological disorders, as I'm sure many of you have seen. Um, in fact, my uncle currently is being treated by a neurologist in Israel, and in Israel, where they're far more advanced in this is a, a, on cannabis and medicine, um, he's been prescribing it for the last four years or so there, and pick up at any the equivalent of a Walgreens in Israel for that kind of prescription. So from that angle, I think it's a very important medicine that needs to be further studied, and can really help a lot of people with neurological disorders, from children with, multiple, with having hundreds of seizures a day, all the way up to adults with dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and, and others. On my dad's side, um, in August of last year, he had three open brain surgeries in the span of five weeks. He was being pumped full of the lot, which is a very, very difficult deal. As everyone here, I'm sure, is aware, we have prices in not only the state and surrounding states, but across the entire country on opiate abuse. And a lot of that doesn't start off with a soccer mom saying, I want to try heroin starts off with the doctor prescribing some kind of painkiller, and you slowly get addicted. So for five weeks, my father was being pumped with a lot and it was extremely scary for us, because he needed it, and there was no alternative. This was in Miami. Um, thankfully, he didn't get addicted, but it's because it's he has a strong character, and, there's, and a strong uh, perseverance to not let that kind of stuff affect him. And so here in Massachusetts, where patients can actually not so opioids for pain management can use medical cannabis, it's, it's, it's really something that's amazing. And we want to be able to offer the best of that to the patients in this community. Um, so to get into our team, our chairman of the board and executive director. I don't know if it's helpful. Um, do we want to, is there a way to rotate the kind schedule? Of come around and let's sit behind you. Yeah, the same. Uh, so uh, so we should we should fortunately, we can't move the screen. Okay. Um, okay. 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 But if we have copies, we can tell us who wants to Welcome to this side also. Let's go for block.
look into a little bit of our team. I'll start with myself since I'm the one who's here. Um, I went to Babson College right outside of Wellesley. Uh, graduated from there in 2009. That same year, I started a product. I started a company where we make a product called Dreamwater, a two and a half ounce shot that helps you fall asleep, all natural, drug free, um, FDA regulated as a dietary supplement. Uh, I, we currently have that product in about 30,000 stores in the US, including at most major food drug mass retailers like Walgreens, CVS, Stop and Shop, all the airports next time we fly with Logan, you see us at the registers of the new stands, and uh, multiple international countries. Um, as our executive director and chairman of the board, we have my father, uh, Roma Lekach. He is the co-founder of Perfumania, which he grew to be the largest specialty fragrance retail store. Chain is over 300 stores in over 30 states, publicly traded on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, and and uh, we sold the controlling interest of that. He also manufa licensed, manufactured, and distributed fragrances all over the world in over 70 countries under um, the brands of Perrielis, Paris Hilton, Guess, Ultra Pacific, uh, at Hardy, True Religion, Santa Gomez, Adam Levine, Katy Perry, and many more. Um, as another director and our CFO, Chief Financial Officer, we have Mark, Andrew Mark Young. Um, you love my Mark. Mark is the former CFO of Perfume Media and New Wave Fragrances, one of the fragrance manufacturing companies. Uh, as our director of cultivation, we have Michael Thompson. He is one of the top cultivators in the state of Colorado. He is the co-founder of one of the fastest growing stores just outside of Colorado Springs, the Stenson Medicine, and uh, serving recreational patients. And he has overseen over 250,000 square feet of marijuana cultivation space at a time. He is also responsible for the largest single uh, harvest in Colorado State history. Legal harvest in Colorado State history. You have Daniel Carlin, who has started various GI businesses uh, where he's been able to put the specialized pathology, uh, pathology labs together with doctors and build national sales teams around it. You then have uh, Dr. Mike Christian, who's an advisor, he's a chief medical officer and our advisor. He's the co director of GI malignancies at Mount Sinai Medical Center in Miami Beach. And he has been going throughout Latin America, particularly, um, talking about cannabis as a medicine. Uh, I'm going to skip a few people, but uh, Mal Porter uh, is a representative and he's our individual responsible for security. He is um, part of the Lantel team. Lantel is a company that's been working with us for our security needs. They are one of the premier security companies in the state of Massachusetts. And then I'll Ended off with uh, another member of our board of directors, Robin Moshe of Life. He's the founder of the Wellesley Weston Chabad Center. He has done extensive study, and he himself is a uh, cancer survivor. And at the time that he had cancer and he was going through chemotherapy, he only, this, this was many years ago, and he wishes he had access to this, and it's available to certain, uh, to, to, to similar patients today. And so with that, I'll pass it over. Thank you, Joseph. Um, so the next slide, I wanted to give the, uh, uh, the board kind of just a, a timeline of how we got to where we are today um, with Massachusetts Patient Foundation. This has been a long uh, process for this organization, as it is for many organizations. It's a rigorous uh, process that starts with the state process. It's a three-phase application with the Commonwealth. Uh, the application is made through the Department of Public Health. We have success, uh, Massachusetts Patient Foundation has successfully made it through all phases, and we're in the final part of the last phase, called, you can see on the slide here, it's phase three. That's the psychic profile phase. And that is where um, uh, the, the, the key consideration in the psychic profile phase is a letter of support and non opposition that's required um, as, as, a, as a Department of Public Health application requirement you're required to get in order to, to move on in, in the state process. And we have uh, received that um, from the Oregon Board of Selectmen. Um, that was at a public hearing uh, prior to this. February 22nd, 2016, and we, we were very pleased to have a uh, four uh, oh, uh, unanimous vote um, to four letter of non opposition to, to the Massachusetts Patient Foundation um, at the location which we'll be speaking about, and Tony will be speaking about in more detail today as, uh, as a subject of the special permit, uh, 11 Water Street, Unit 3B. Um, and so as part of, uh, I don't want to get into too much detail with the letter of opposition, but there may be questions about it. Um, that, that process involved uh, multiple meetings with town officials prior to even uh, presenting before the board, uh, town manager, town council, um, looking to ensure that the property was suitable uh, with respect to the zone. 
uh, with respect to setbacks that may apply um, and allowing us to move forward in the process. And that's, and that's what uh, brings us here today. Okay, next slide. Um, we also, um, for those of the public that may not be aware and, and members of the board, uh, uh, Massachusetts Space Foundation, along with a uh, receiving letter on opposition, also um, negotiated a host agreement, host community agreement, and that provides direct monetary benefits um, in return for, for allowing us to host it in, in the town of Arlington. In this case, um, that host agreement, I'll talk about it on the next slide, uh, but, it, but it amounts to a, a flat payment of $100,000 along with annual payments, 3% of the gross revenue um, that, the, that the registered marijuana dispensary uh, takes in in, in a year. Um, just on August 16th, I remember we were very fortunate to go for the Pittsburgh Planning Board. We issued a special permit um, for our cultivation and processing facility. I think it's important to note um, to, to everybody that, that we're not planning on cultivating any marijuana or processing or packaging any marijuana in our, and everything that will come um, to this location um, will be packaged and ready for sale with all the safety and all of the you know, opaque packaging and all the protections that are built in from, built in from the Department of Public Health regulations. Um, and that will all occur in Fitchburg um, and will be transported to this uh, dispensary uh, based on patient demand. Um, we do expect that we'll to receive a provisional certificate of registration any day now um, from the Department of Public Health. Our application is pending and we're just kind of in the queue waiting. Um, next slide. Please. So, Okay. So one thing to add is that um, what will occur after this process is there's another public hearing process for, for everybody in Arlington, and that would be the, the local public health uh, department here has implemented their own thorough regulations, which is great, and that we'll, we would have to apply um, after we get the original registration, after we go through this process, we would also apply to the Board of Health and we would go through a public process there uh, in, in, in compliance with all of their regulations. So that would be one other public step that we would take after this. And as part of the public health uh, process, um, there's also a public, uh, annual public meeting that's a requirement in, part, in the public health, local public health regulations that requires community meetings, abutters meetings, and that's really kind of the time where we have interaction uh, with those locally affected um, and address any concerns that we can. And that's an annual requirement. That's, that's you know, kudos to Arlington for doing that. It's the only community that actually requires. Needham was considering it, but apparently the one that does it. I think it's a good thing. And it allows every year upon renewal to have this public meeting. So they'll, they'll, they'll do this continuing dialogue. Um, a little bit about the community host agreement. I mentioned it before. These are just some of the kind of the, the material terms. Um, I will say, I mentioned before, the percentage of gross revenue that's going to kind of flow back to the coffers of Arlington to spend as it wishes, you know, whether it's more police, uh, whether it's drug uh, treatment or drug education, um, that's three percent of the of gross sales. The next slide, please. So this, I'll, I'll just hand it off to Tony Capuchetti to handle kind of the more uh, nuts and bolts of the uh, special project. Thank you, Tony Capuchetti with Dave Engineering, uh, civil engineering project. Uh, we're here before you tonight for uh, special permit uh, approval. Um, the special permit. Uh, seeks to use an existing space at 11 Water Street on the third floor of the very building. Um, it is a medical office building currently. Uh, this use is, is fairly analogous to a medical office um, or specialty retail, uh, which would be like a, a, a medical supply company or, or the like. Um, and the site, after we receive special the permit approval, uh, should we receive special permit approval, uh, we still have to adhere to uh, many requirements, especially the uh, Department of Public Health uh, operational and security requirements, and, and those are items that are reviewed uh, in process and maintained by the Public Health uh, to make sure that uh, operations and security are consistently up to and uh, we stay with the So, uh, we're fortunate enough to have an existing building, which is a uh, pretty well occupied and successful medical building. Um, we'd be on the third floor. We don't anticipate a large increase in traffic. The patterns would be the same as they are currently. We're not making any changes to the site. Uh, there's a large municipal parking lot adjacent and behind um, the site that's a pay lot. Uh, 
The estimated increase going from the medical office to a specialty retail using the IT trip generation numbers would be about eight more vehicles per day. Um, we're looking in the range of between 50 and 60 vehicles per day total um, over an eight or 10, 10 hour operation, operational period. Uh, peak vehicles, you might see about uh, 12 during the peak hours. Uh, again, plenty of parking. And not a huge traffic generator. Uh, that site itself with a lot of parking lots, you can see many more vehicles every day. Uh, there's also bicycle parking, uh, and the site is unique in that it is adjacent to the bicycle path and public transportation, uh, so that will be promoted among uh, our clientele. Uh, we're not going to tax the municipal uh, utility systems. There's no increase in stormwater because it's an existing site. Uh, there's uh, no increase uh, slow use is strictly retail, so you'll have your employees and customers. Uh, there'll be no uh, production that would increase uh, water or wastewater generation. Uh, the only trash that will be disposed of on site in the dumpster would be non uh, marijuana containing waste. That would be cardboard, uh, papers, uh, and the like. Um, marijuana containing waste is regulated by the DPH. Uh, that is either return to the cultivation center. Um, that's generally how it's handled, where it's then made unusable um, through a variety of processes and disposed of that way. Uh, and one of the other requirements, special permit, is preservation of the landscape, uh, relation to building and environment. Again, this building fits in uh, quite well with that area of the town. We're not proposing any changes, uh, save for uh, inclusion of a small sign that would say Mass Massachusetts Patient Foundation. Uh, by state law, we're not allowed to advertise what type of product. Uh, we're not allowed to, to show any uh, illustrations that would allude to the product. Um, and this is a nonprofit corporation in Massachusetts, again, uh, that will occupy the site. Um, the Arlington zoning bylaws allow for the uh, medical marijuana treatment centers in the B3 and B5 zone. We are in the B5 zone. Uh, so the, the town did uh, specify where these uses would be cited. Um, and again, the 11 Water Street building is in the B5 district and we would occupy about a 2,600 square foot area of that uh, building. Uh, we need to show that the use is uh, desirable to the public and humans of all here. Um, again, this is a medical product. This is medicine for sick people who have to be registered and prove their, their, their ailments. Uh, the people of the Commonwealth voted in 2012 uh, to legalize it. Uh, voting records show that, that the majority of the citizens in Arlington supported that initiative. Uh, right now there's, there's approximately 29,000 active uh, card holders or, or patients in the Commonwealth. Um, there's about 2,000 new patients registering every month. So there is a demand uh, for this medicine. Um, and there's only seven RMDs in the state currently. Uh, there are more uh, trying to come online, but there's definitely a deficiency uh, in need. The closest uh, RMD to this site would be uh, either the Boston or Brookline uh, facilities. Uh, and <coughs> did you want to add about, uh, currently if you don't have a uh, facility in your town, or some yeah, I'm items that you should dispensary. be aware of. One of the other benefits of having a dispensary and uh, is, is it, there's a provision of the Commonwealth's uh, regulations that allow for hardship cultivation. And, and really, hardship cultivation essentially means that patients and caregivers that are unable to obtain their medicine, um, really patients that can't obtain their medicine, um, because there isn't, they don't have access to a nearby dispensary, are allowed to cultivate and grow their own marijuana in their homes. Um, and the way, one of the benefits to Arlington by having a dispensary in its community is you eliminate uh, any kind of viable uh, application for a hardship cultivation with, with the Commonwealth. So because there is going to be one that's nearby, that's close to public transportation, that's going to be able to serve the patients in Arlington and the surrounding areas, um, there'll be no, there, there should be no hardship cultivation permits issued by the department allowing people in Arlington to grow marijuana in their own, in their own homes. So that's a, one other aspect of the law that I want to point out. So. Other site uh, special permit criteria um, is that the proposed use will not be detrimental to the character of the district 
uh, the health and mental welfare. Again, this is a, a medical office building. Um, this is a medical use that would be going into this uh, office building. Uh, the unit itself is self-contained. You, you come off the elevator, the entrance is there. Uh, there'll be uh, security provisions that require that you show an ID before you can enter the suite. And then that uh, ID will be again checked against the state database before you can access uh, the area where the medicine is. Um, and no marijuana will be visible again in any advertising features, uh, packaging, or, or the like. And no consumption of marijuana will be allowed on site. There will be security staff to make sure those uh, people who purchase uh, then proceed directly to their, their car or possibly an appointment in the building, but uh, leave the site as quickly as possible. Uh, again, advertising features. There's a 13 by 30 inch <coughs> glass panel sign. Uh, gold letters about two inches high that say Massachusetts Patient Foundation. Um, and, and that's it. There will be no other advertising features. It's not like yeah, there's going to be neon signs or you know, um, anything else. Uh, Turn it back over to Adam. Thank you, Tony. So, so I wanted to walk through this. Um, give uh, everybody an understanding uh, kind of what, who is going to be uh, going to this uh, registered marijuana dispensary, um, and kind of the process that, that the patients go through in the Commonwealth to get a patient card. Really what we're talking about um, is really a specialized pharmacy that's going to be serving a very limited uh, group of people that will be eligible. It's only a limited amount of qualified patients. Right now we have 30,000 um, with other dispensaries, so we're going to be taking a fraction of that that we're going to be serving. Uh, it's, unlike other states, the Commonwealth has put forth very comprehensive regulations on, on, on the process to get a, a, a registered uh, marijuana patient card. Um, you have to apply for a registration card. The first thing that you'll do is you'll go to a physician. Uh, the physician will make a determination um, uh, based on discussions with the patient. Uh, that you have a condition, a, a debilitating medical condition, whereby you would benefit uh, from medical marijuana. And this is not, a, you know, this is not any doctor, it's not an out-of-state doctor, it's got to be a Massachusetts physician, a bona fide a physician patient relationship. And, and that's an important aspect that other states don't have. We have that in the Commonwealth. And what that means is the patient, the doctor has to actually see the patient, have a file on the patient, doctors see the patient once, twice a year, at least that the doctor will be seeing the patient and following the patient, uh, you know, with the chart. So these are, uh, that, that's the first step. The next step is that certification is submitted by the physician to the Department of Public Health and it's reviewed. And this review period um, can take a period of time as the department kind of reviews that the, first, that the patient fits the criteria and that the certification is valid. Only then um, is a part issue uh, to the specific patient. Up on the screen is an example of what the card would look like. This card, along with another form of identification, is a requirement to, eat, to, to get into the dispensary. No one is allowed to eat into the dispensary uh, unless they have, unless they're a qualified patient with this card and it, and it also has another form of identification. Um, it's an annual renewal, so it's, it's, it's twice a year, and then there's um, uh, these certifications have to kind of happen every year. Um, any caregivers, so patients that are unable because they're sick or disabled, they're unable to leave their homes, they can have caregivers that will go to the dispensary and get the medicine. They also have to go through the similar uh, process um, and get a card. Um, so these are the only two groups of folks, uh, of people that will ever be allowed into this dispensary. And this will be a, um, we'll talk about kind of the process. Go to the next slide, Dave. So, Massachusetts Patient Foundation has a comprehensive security plans that we will be providing um, the police department along with uh, to the health. Um, we'll certainly be happy to, Mr. Chairman, to provide this, this to you as plans to you as well to request. But I, I just want to touch upon uh, some of the access, uh, a little bit of the access, ask, excuse me, access criteria of, of the Department of Public Health security plans that, that our plans incorporate. Well, when entering the, uh, before entering, there's going to be two doors um, uh, to, to enter this dispensary. And there's kind of a, what's called a sally port, in other words, a security area. But the main, at the entrance to the dispensary, there'll be cameras or there'll be a security guard position or both. And at that, at that, at that point, uh, the patient or the caregiver will present their uh, registered card that you saw on the previous page. 
uh, that, that card will be looked at. And only after that card is verified, that person will be buzzed into a secure kind of, it's called a man trap, I don't like that term, but really a sally port, it's kind of a, a secure area where uh, you can't get into the active dispensary um, until you, you uh, until you have a second, you go to a security desk, you have a sec, you have your ID checked again, in addition to your state ID. So you have two forms of ID in the Sally Port area presented to a registered agent that's someone that works at the dispensary, security guard that works at the dispensary. Only after those uh, two IDs are verified, run through the state system, would you be allowed to that second door. Um, and I didn't explain it that clearly, but you're going to see it very clearly on the next uh, page when we talk about the um, site plan. So this is if you look down at restricted access, Sally Port entrance, the first ID check, that is the, the entrance to the suite in the building, on the third floor of the building. At that point, there'll be a security guard and a camera facing there um, and a buzzer. And you'll have to actually present your ID to the camera to get buzzed in. And then in the restricted access area, there'll be the second ID check where they'll require, there'll be a security officer there. And they'll, and they'll take a look at two IDs and run you through the system. And only then will you be actually allowed into the restricted patient access area, which is that area there. So that's uh, um, hopefully uh, presents a uh, you know, kind of a, this is a conceptual floor plan. Um, and Mr. Chairman, we did uh, we did a, a provide amendments to that today. Um, this is kind of the latest conceptual plan. So a little bit, a little bit more on security. Uh, uh, some some aspects of the regulations. Um, there's cameras basically essentially going to be everywhere. I mean, there anywhere that, that a patient can go, uh, there will be cameras. There'll be there'll be cameras on the exterior of the buildings. There'll be appropriate lighting if we need to. Um, these are night vision cameras. They're high definition. Um, just one thing to note on those cameras, we actually saw it in Brookline. Um, Brookline had a we saw the cameras actually. Help uh, the police department there. So there was a rash of burglaries that were unsolved in Brookline, um, and they went to the, the dispensary that was operating there, and they asked them if they could view their their, their footage because they believed that the suspect from the burglaries in the, in the in adjacent neighboring at the residences, uh, you know, they believed that the, the suspect kind of traveled on the street by that dispensary. And they were able to actually get high definition surveillance footage of the license plates of this vehicle, and they solved their their. Uh, I'm told they solved their, uh, you know, this, this crime that had been ongoing um, because of the cameras that, that were on the exterior um, of the dispensary performance. So, so there are some kind of real added security benefits, um, and that's just one example of it. Uh, in terms of uh, one of the another aspect of the regulations uh, is, a, is a seat to sale inventory tracking system. This means that all product is 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 tracked from the time it is is a seed the time that it is sold. Um, we know exactly the quantities, we know exactly uh, every, every piece of, every product, um, any marijuana product is fully accounted for in the seat to sales tracking uh, system. Um, security cameras are, uh, are monitored 24 hours a day. Um, if needed, we have, will have security agents, um, you know, outside of the dispensary. Uh, we don't anticipate we'll need that, but we'll certainly is, uh, upon opening, we'll have that just to kind of make sure that everyone knows where they're going. Um, and obviously, at the entire interior of the facility um, is covering cameras as well. Um, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health regulations also require a fully redundant alarm system. Um, this, will, this will go to two different um, monitoring companies. There's the ability to wire in directly uh, with the Arlington Police Department if they so desire. Uh, our experience has been that police departments don't actually want this. Um, when I say wired in, they can actually see the, see the video footage live if they want to, and we certainly have that ability. Um, but but alarms, alarms will be sent directly to the police department um, if, if something were to happen. Um, there's going to be a, a secure lock safe or vault. There will only be enough inventory needed on site to serve the anticipated patient demand. Um, and no consumption of marijuana is permitted anywhere in the unit or in public. This will be if anyone does this, uh, they're not going to be a patient of the Massachusetts Patient Foundation. This is a violation of the law and it will not be tolerated. Um, so it's important to point that out. Um, and we'll have, uh, you know, we're going to, we'll, we'll, the Massachusetts Patient Foundation is willing to bring on as much resources as it needs in conjunction with, you know, discussions with the police department and certainly any resident uh, concerns. 
uh, we're, we put as much security to that as we need to, as makes, uh, as makes people feel comfortable. So just to summarize, um, and I really want to leave time for questions, but um, you, know, you know, we presented the, the, the written materials, that, you know, as part of the record, um, and certainly the sort of testimony, and uh, you know, we believe that we meet all of the criteria for the special permit, uh, in accordance with the requirements of design review and the general special permit requirements, um, and uh, believe it will be a, a beneficial use uh, uh, to Arlington. So we respectfully, you know, be asking. Here tonight, and respectfully, we'll be asking the board, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board, um, to grant a special permit and impose any sort of conditions that, that you desire to do so. Thank you for the thorough presentation. I appreciate it. Uh, first, I'll open up to questions uh, from the other members of the board. Uh, before I do that, I would like to see the security plan in detail if you can present the plan. Um, and is there anything in that plan regarding the training processes? and the hiring criteria. Um. Mr. Chairman, one of the criteria for actually being able to be hired not just as a security personnel, but literally as a janitor that's entering the space is passing a thorough background check through the Department of Public Health. Uh, we get a full criminal background check and an added thing that we are now doing as the Massachusetts Foundation is running annual credit reports. Mm -hmm. Most credit cards from 690 to 540, obviously, they're going to be more inclined to try and diverse the next one. Um, so, those are that's very important that we're, that we're taking. Along those lines, how what kind of staffing needs we have for the employee? Uh, and how many people will be on site at any time? Uh, it really is going to depend on patient demand. Um, so, one of the plans that we have is starting off with a wide array of even hours uh, with staff, uh, three to four personnel at any given moment, and then adjusting both hours of staff to the case on patient demand right from the start. So we're going to be very nimble with, with, with that. And we want to project high at the beginning and pair back to the okay. what, I guess, what kind of professionals do you have on site? You have know, CBS, obviously, you have pharmacists and so on. Do you have any, you have a pharmacist or some equivalent, you have an MD on site? So there will not be an MD on site. There will be an MD able to be consulted with uh, when patients request that. Uh, on site, you're going to have uh, product, uh, medicine, product medicine specialists who will know a lot about the actual medicine that's being dispensed. And one of the tools that we're going to be providing is with the thorough testing that's happens for all medicine in the Commonwealth, uh, we will be able to actually, be, based on some general, since there's no actual FDA approved research uh, based on different cannabinoid profiles that help direct patients to the correct uh, cannabis for them. So you could expect two to three of those product specialists at any given moment. And what sort of qualifications? Uh, it, we, we, it's an internal training that we do. Um, it's, and it's, for us, our focus is on the customer service and the customer care. And so it's something that, we're not, that we won't take lightly. Um, we're, the plan for us is to have not only the cultivation site in Fishburg, but have three dispensing locations. So we have comprehensive plans, and uh, currently today, um, some members of the team, myself included, we're currently we're operating a medical marijuana dispensary in the state of Oregon. And uh, so far, thankfully, all of our reviews seem to say that our product knowledge and our product expertise is extremely high, and that's one of the reviews that we get most of. Um, what about and there's a report addressed uh, transport of money to the site to the bank. What about transport of product? How does that to be handled from Fitchburg to our Absolutely. So um, the DPH has very, very, very strict rules about how this works. Uh, first of all, it has to be in a nondescript transportation vehicle. Uh, the routes have to be randomized. So we can't take the same route even if it's charged every single time that we do uh, deliveries. Uh, there has to always be two dispensary units in the car at all times. Um, the actual cannabis has to be held in a locked compartment within the car. And the car has to have tw complete two-way communication available at any given moment. Uh, the route is known, all inventory is, has, has exit manifest and entrance manifest. So we know what happens with all inventory. And if any of, if the route is, is if they divert from the route, 
any uh, for any purpose, it's something we report to the DH. And your, your application also mentions the possibility of delivery. Yes. How would that be handled? So delivery is, in certain respects, similar to cultivation to store delivery. You still have to have uh, two people in the car at all given moments. Both of them have to be dispensary agents, so their badge is showing. The actual medicine has to be held in the locked compartment within the car. The car has to be nondescript. Um, the uh, cash is, is installed cash deposit within the car as well, so that, that can be access to put in, and uh, to a communication. For the most part, what we're going to be doing is we're investigating a uh, comprehensive mobile and web app system where patients will be able to register with us. Uh, if they can't come in for the first time for a consultation, their first home visit will have a consultation uh, portion to that as well. Um, and all appointments have to be pre-scheduled. Before the, the delivery leaves the location, we call uh, the patient or communicate with them in some other simple manner that they've decided and verify that they are in fact going to be home for that delivery. If they are not home, we will not be able to make the delivery. Uh, so it's, it's fairly, fairly comprehensive as well, and the routes in that situation are randomized as well. Okay. You mentioned that you're, you're operating a dispensary in, in Oregon. Um, and I saw that in your bio. Is it you? Is it the team? Uh, it's, prim it's primarily myself and Daniel Pardon, and we act and we sent uh, the first one going to be the general manager for our retail for our three retail stores, so kind of a regional manager. We've been out of training for the last six months. Okay. You said that your, your reviews are good, but how's your safety record? How's your record with the state authorities out there? So I can tell you that at this point, we, we opened on January 4th of this year. We have had I think maybe 25 cents missing because it, it dropped the the uh, no missing inventory, and we have had one issue uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, someone came into the store, logged themselves in because we, we follow actually a lot of Massachusetts rules out there. The security aspect of the DPH rules, we checked them in, they entered into the dispensing area, they grabbed a quarter ounce of, of cannabis and ran out. We had them on five different camera angles of each video. Uh, we also had their ID checked in, because you can't get into the actual dispensing area without the ID. We called the police. The police actually had, had knew of this person. They found him within 30 minutes, brought him to the store. We opted not to press charges for banning him, because it was about $60 worth of cannabis. We paid for it. We banned him from the, from the store. That's the only security issue we've had. Thankfully, it was very easily resolved because of all the security precautions we take. And those are obviously. <clears throat> I shouldn't say that. So those are some of the same security protocols that we follow here. It will be stricter here. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have. Uh, I, I don't think so. Um, the only thing I'd ask uh, Jenny or, or yourself, do, do we know of any uh, specific objection, objections to this permit from either Chief Ryan or Director Bunchon? I have not received any specific objections from either. And you don't know of any that, that up during the uh, uh, post process or anything like that. Not from those two individuals. Okay. And I think so we can see it. I was present at that meeting and do not recall either the chief or Christine Bundrum on your making any sort of comments. Okay. As he's doing. Right. Thank you. operation you guys close at 8 p.m. So to start off we want to go wide. I don't know when the patients can patients get off work. We don't know what the patient needs for this area will be. No, that's, that's my question is what does uh, the other hours of surrounding medical offices? They close at six or they close later? Um, are you going to be the only one open at that eight o'clock hour? Uh, we may be, but we're, we'll reevaluate that soon. Honestly, for us, we want to we want to make it easy for the patients. Uh, so if a patient who's working in Boston gets off at six, it might take them an hour to get here. Um, and so we have we want to be conscious of that. But that's also one of the reasons why we do off home delivery over here. But back in my way is to start with. Um, if the building is turning off and going and, and going lights out earlier, we're going to comply with that building. Uh, we're there to be a tenant of the building, a good tenant of the building. And so we're going to follow the building hours of operations at the end of the day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wanted to just make sure the parking requirement was met. Uh, Jenny, you 
that that required them to do it. Yeah. Based off of the zoning uh, bylaw, there's no additional parking needed uh, because the use that's going in it is very similar to the use that went out. Our assumption is that the parking uh, was vetted when that building was approved as a medical use and no additional parking was needed. There is a deep uh, space for the unit uh, for employee parking in the underground garage and the parking lot that's to the rear and adjacent to it is a, a, a pay lot, but uh, there's sufficient parking there. I was there Five thirty tonight. Page three. Yep. Er four. Uh, the board and then, uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, servicing. Uh, you're you're just following. You know, the servicing that occurs at the building <coughs> currently. Whatever trucks need to pull up to bring supplies other than the uh, marijuana delivery occurs where? Uh, the underground area. So the, the, the elevator goes to the underground area? The, and the trucks go in there? Uh, there will not be a, uh, there's not going to be a large truck, it's going to be like a sprinter van. Or just the regular paper supplies, whatever's coming to that office like a van. Yeah, there's more than enough area, more than enough room, and we plan on making those kinds of deliveries uh, not very operating that way. And that's below grade delivery? Yeah, it's, it's kind of ground level-ish with a small dip. Um, oh, but you can go in that garage with a oh, yeah, so delivery van. Yeah, yeah, it's got a clearance. Exactly. It's what's what's going, going on right now. Correct. Right. So it's more than enough clearance, and uh, we have a dedicated space in there as well. And then as far as just trash, not marijuana trash, I get that. Uh, that's a separate thing, but your, your dumpsters and so forth, where are they? Um, we would be using the building dumpsters. Uh, I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure where they are all those. So, uh, I believe the trash is internal in that building. Yeah. There's, there's a, actually an on-site dumpster. Is there? Not, not a dumpster. <coughs> that was a location. There's a series of maybe 15 uh, separate things. On the sidewalk outside. That's one of the worst eyesores. Is that a lineup of dumpsters? This is a separate issue from potentially if it's a building issue. But well, one of the things I could say is if, if, the, if the board would like it, um, we're already going to be sending back any cannabis waste to the fish for cultivation facility for disposal. I have no problem. It's not, there's not going to be much waste on site, so I have no problem sending back as well. Not have that. Or, or, or do your best to, to, uh, to lead the way on cleaning that area up for the absolutely. If you may be the, the one that uh, everybody follows and better practices on that in, in that area. Absolutely. Actually, along those lines, I had another question uh, because there will be <coughs> maintenance, access, office supply, delivery, things like that. How do you control for that? Um, we're going to be making well, maintenance again, it's janitorial, and our, and our people, uh, they're all going to be registered agents and vetted uh, uh, by the BPA. If there's a maintenance issue, they have to be escorted. First of all, we have to log them in uh, as, as a visitor on site. They have to be escorted by a registered dispensary uh, agent at all times, and they're only allowed to be escorted to the areas where they need to specifically touch upon. Okay. So that's also to the need in our security market. And as far as office and like deliveries, they can leave those outside to the Correct. Correct. Without creating our security address for tenants. And, and quite honestly, we would likely still have that all delivery center at the Fitchburg. Uh, that, that's the our distribution center because mm -hmm. it would be inefficient to order just for one location. Is the Fitchburg location, just a side question, that's part of Massachusetts Patient Foundation? Correct. Right? And that, your intent with that is to service other expenditures as well? Oh, only ours. 
what kind of inventory do you intend to stock? Uh, we would we have uh, different kinds of delivery at different orientations. Uh, at the outset, we're planning on having actual medical uh, cannabis flower by uh, various uh, degrees of weight. Uh, we also plan on having uh, various different degrees of uh, extracts and edibles, so uh, shatter, live rosin, um, actual, it look like e cigarettes, but it's a nice instance of vaporized THC without PG. Um, probably I don't think I the name, I'm sorry. That's what's really bad. Mm -hmm. It's not, <laughs> it's not because it's not going to contain that. Uh, so they'll be able to smoke it, vaporize it. Uh, we'll also have a limited array of edibles at the beginning, uh, including uh, chocolates, because the, the chocolate homogenizes the THC nicely. Uh, so, and we're also going to have gel caps. So uh, pills with daytime, nighttime, uh, formulations that uh, patients can take, but they can just take a look at. You want basically an extra way for patients to choose a little bit And all of this is, is tracked in the seed to sale or process. There's no, you know, there any, any potential loss is accounted for. The, no, if there's any loss, we know about it immediately and because of all the security cameras, we we'll know about it. Also, in this group, I can guarantee that the working group plan is um, on employee badges. It will have RFID tracking. So not only will we have cameras, we'll be able to tell you by the minute where every employee was on the facility. The facility is fairly large. It's a 28-acre former Bayer pharmaceutical plant. So it's uh, it's it's going to be very very helpful to have that. Um, right 
as we have the contemplation of the uh, coming out of the house, um, but we're open to it. I know that which essentially you started that with. Um, yeah, some dispensaries have chosen to kind of start with appointment only and see how it, um, you know, see how it goes. And certainly, we're open to that. One of the problems we've seen with appointment only is that um, you tend that people arrive early uh, or they arrive late, uh, and they end up kind of lingering around, uh, which kind of causes the opposite effect of what you're trying to do, which is regulate kind of people coming in the house. So we're certainly open to it. Um, Netta New England the Treatment Access in Brooklyn did start. Um, first three weeks with appointment only, uh, and then they, they decided uh, to have a lot of traffic issues over there, but, so they ended up deciding to have a police detail there because they had no parking at all, um, and it worked out it worked out well. But um, I'm not sure that appointment only would be would be necessary here, but certainly uh, uh, the board wanted it to be something we absolutely consider as an important. And by the way, uh, I have no problem giving you my cell phone number if you're ever you just call me directly. Now, the $100,000, is that a permit or is that a legal penalty? 
Uh, $100,000 is a gift to the, the city. Also, just to address the 80 a day, that, to that aggregate number includes home deliveries. Okay. Uh, the 3% that you mentioned, uh, that, that was to the town on the proceeds, and that was to offset the added police details or whatever else is involved in this, they're involved in this water health and so forth. Any idea of all packed what that number might be on an annual it, basis? It will likely be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. So that would be, that would be a little bit of And the claim is that that wouldn't be, a, that's within your scope and not after hours and other people come in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Crystal Reddy, 56 Adam Street. Um, I would respectfully submit that the applicants have no business being here tonight. And the reason is that they're not following the process. The, the special permit use that they requested in their permit application is not one that's even listed in our zoning bylaw. They listed something that complies with state law or state regulation. What the zoning bylaw says is that a, a facility permitted by the Board of Health can receive a special permit from the, from the development board. This facility has not received a permit from the Board of Health. They haven't even applied for a permit from the Board of Health. They cannot even apply uh, for a permit from the Board of Health because they have not yet received the necessary approval from the state. So they're getting way ahead of themselves by even being here tonight. I would request that the Board request the applicant to draw their application without the prejudice and that you grant them that request and that they come back should, in the future, they receive the necessary permit from the Board of Health. That's the proper procedure. That's what town meeting voted on, not you know, coming in here with speculation about what might happen in the future. So uh, if you don't do that, then I suggest you must deny this permit because it does not comply with the Board of um, Health regulations as promulgated at the end of June. And in particular, this facility does not comply with the buffer zone requirements to protect children in the town. And the Arlington Board of Health adopted a 500 foot buffer zone for things like uh, schools, daycare centers, or any facility which children which children commonly congregate. This facility does not meet that requirement for multiple reasons. There is, for example, the Mariposa Montessori School, located here on Mass Ave, that's within 500 feet. There is the Wind of New Bay Arlington Learning Center located at Four Water Street. There is the Children's Library as part of Arlington Public Library, as well as a team room at Arlington Public Library within 500 feet. There is a pediatric office in the same building. There is a bike path well within 500 feet. For any number of reasons, this facility does not qualify. And these are all regulations of the Board of Health. I would ask you to respect their judgment and their process. I do not see how you can claim that this meets the environmental design review standard for safety when it violates all of these safety or violates in multiple ways the safety regulations of the Board of Health. And, and you know, to the point that 68% of voters favor medical marijuana facilities in this town, I would suggest they did it on the basis those facilities were, we were told that they were going to be very tightly regulated, that all of these safety measures would be implemented, and now those, those measures are being ignored. The fact that other town officials have ignored these uh, children's facilities within 500 feet of this uh, center is no reason for the board to do so. So I would ask you, uh, if indeed the, the options want to go forward tonight without that board health regulation, that you deny the permit on that basis. And finally, I have, I do understand I was told that the, uh, the permit would be conditional on the Board of Health approval. And it's actually only the Board of Health that matters, not what the town of Health matters. So it's the Board of Health that has the authority to the permit. In fact, if you look at the draft text that was given to you, it doesn't say anything about the special permit being conditional. It talks about the building permit being conditional. And frankly, knowing how our building department works, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't even require a permit for the renovations that we said. So I'll leave it at that. I would like to give you my written comments. I've got a map that shows the children's facilities. But I specifically ask that this be made part of the docket so that anyone else can have this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my
My name is Mark Lawyer, and I own a uh, financial planning practice on the second floor of the building. And myself and some other advisors in the space have great concerns about uh, increased traffic, uh, parking, as well as security. Did a great job of explaining security for the third floor site, but our concern is with the adjacent municipal lot. Because the underground parking is, it's, it's all uh, really for employees and you would have one spot there. Um, so people coming in would be parked in the municipal spot. Today, if you come in at 5.30, you can find spots. But if you come in during the middle of the day, anywhere between 11 and 3 o'clock, quite often you'll have to wait for somebody to move just so you can find after the parking. Because today I have clients that are 15 minutes late to meetings because they can't get a spot in this spot. Uh, things have changed quite a bit from now, from uh, a year ago when the city put in new uh, parking meters. Uh, the lots fall all the time. And in terms of vehicles coming into the underground unit, um, we already have congestion there where the uh, doctor's office on the first floor has uh, uh, a company coming in to pick up uh, lab specimens a couple times a day, and they're continually uh, locking other tenants in. And there was actually a car accident there about two weeks ago uh, involved in uh, an outside company coming in, just blocking people in it and running into the building for 15 minutes or so. Uh, then we have concerns about the security of the rest of the building along with the parking area. Because the last thing we want is to have people buying a product on the third floor going out to their car and lighting up in the municipal parking lot. And then it becomes a perception uh, issue for our clients coming into the building as well as the rest of the town. Uh, now I know it's easy to say, well, once they're off our property, you know, we, our hands are, are tied. But I've been out to Colorado on business uh, before it was legalized and where they had the medical uh, issues. And I've driven by some of these units and you, would, you could see what was going on there. And I don't want that happening um, here in Arlington. And then also the building is being referred to as a medical building. On the second floor, there are no medical buildings. There's my suite, there's Yo Yo Ma's suite, there's uh, another business suite, so there are no medical uh, businesses on the second floor. Um, wanted to know, were you planning on having increased um, police in the municipal lot, or what, what steps can you take to sure that um, people are going home before they, they use their medicine. Uh, so we will have an actual on-site security officer who will make sure the, uh, patients go home. Uh, if, I want to make this very clear. W would that be in the building or would that be in uh, uh, Both indoor and outdoor. We want to make sure that patients know to go home. And as uh, said, my name Adam, um, if someone's caught breaking the law, they will no longer be welcome in our facility. Driving under the influence is breaking the law. And it, we take that extremely seriously. I would also like to say that uh, in terms of added use of the parking, there's 2,600 square feet up there, um, and our use does not, uh, Tony can speak to it, but it does not add more traffic, much more traffic than a traditional uh, occupier of that space would um, add. In terms of the underground, we will not be having, so you, you had mentioned that lab specimens are picked up twice daily for the, for the doctor's office. We're not going to have even one thing daily. Um, so the, not, not one commercial vehicle is going to be going in there daily. So um, like I said, for us, we want to be the best neighbors possible. This is a new use. It's still something that people have to be addressed to here. And then, uh, thankfully, there has not been any added uh, crying as a result of the dispensaries are currently open, being open. Um, but I'm here to dialogue with you. you know, I'll make you the same offer. I'll give myself a number. I'm here. I want to grab a drink after. I'm here to speak to you about these, about your, all of your concerns. Uh, and hopefully, you know, be the best way I possibly can. 
Also, in terms of added security into, on the interior and exterior, we will be adding cameras on the exterior of the building for sure, uh, which we monitor 24 uh, 7. And then, depending on the landlord, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm, you would like to add as many inside as possible as well in the common areas, but it's up to the landlord in that situation. And what he does uh, allows us to add, aside from right in front of our door and entrances. Hope that answers your questions. Uh, in theory, it does. You know, hopefully things play out the way you indicate it will. Um, I understand that uh, on the third floor, if you if that was rented to anybody, that would increase traffic to the parking lot. Um, but I just think it's being underplayed how congested it already is. Um, a year ago, before, or two years ago, before the building was full, before you had the new parking meters, there were plenty of spots there. But that's definitely not the case today. And I can tell you that for us, um, the initial consultations will take a little longer for our patient to make them adjusted and understand what the process is like. Uh, but follow-up follow conversation, uh, uh, patient visits are going to be generally very short. And we don't anticipate more than five to seven uh, cars an hour. And it's literally in an hour. I'd like to, full disclosure, I have uh, two children that are uh, patients at the uh, Huffington Pediatrics uh, practice, and I'd like to echo Mr. Moretti's comments. And through the board, I'd like to ask the, uh, the uh, applicants, uh, what if any uh, representations you made to the Department of Public Health with regards to uh, this location being without, outside 500 feet of the place where children have to congregate? Uh, what if any responses have you received? I'm just interested uh, to know how why this has gotten so far in the process. If there's that buffer zone, what's been uh, represented to you? Sure. I'll can handle it. Thank you for the question. There, there's a lot of confusion around this buffer zone. And just to make it clear, the Department of Public Health has set uh, talk, talks about a buffer zone, and, and the, the buffer zone it talks about is in the regulations, and it's 500 feet uh, from where children. Um, uh, from schools, daycares, playgrounds, and what the department defines is where children commonly congregate. Now, the, the buffer zone does apply um, in towns or cities that have not looked at local siting and done anything on local siting with respect to medical marijuana. Um, an example of that, I think to go to the community offhand, uh, would be uh, a community whereby they haven't addressed local siting, they haven't, they haven't put forth uh, local regulations, health regulations related to marijuana dispensaries, where they haven't put forth a zone where they should be. Um, we don't we don't have that in our own. So what I, in our own, what we have is actually we don't have a setback that's codified anywhere. Certainly, that was one of the considerations uh, that this group went through um, when we uh, sat down with, with uh, the town manager, the town council, uh, presented the selectmen. Um, and, and one of the things that was looked at was the, was this setback and the spirit of the setback, uh, 500 feet. Um, and this was vetted through town council. Um, and at the time, um, there, were, there were no offending uses found. Um, and that was uh, presented to the selectmen in that fashion. But in terms of departments, uh, representations we've made, we fully disclosed the site, the location. Um, the department, as part of the process, asked for what are called a request for further information. Um, I'm not surprised, but we haven't received any requests with respect to setbacks because the, the, the state, it, this is a, a state, a, a default state regulatory uh, issue that is only kind of comes into play if there is no local siting requirement to put into place, and that's not the case here. In some municipalities, by way of example, we do see um, in the local zoning code a parity of what is in the Department of Public Health regulations. We don't have that here. So uh, as, a, as a strict legal consideration, um, there is no buffer. But as a, you know, certainly people are understand the buffer and it was vetted. Um, and, 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 and just that aside, um, so, so we don't uh, feel that there's any, that there are any offending uses. We're very cognizant of it. Um, in terms of the pediatrician's office, we uh, sent an email inquiry to the department specifically about the pediatrician's office. Um, and the response back was that it, that it didn't, it wasn't 
falling under their general definition uh, of a place where children come and congregate. And this is an issue that has come up, and frankly, it's come up in, in, in places where people just don't like to, you know, and, and they, they have a right to their opinion. They don't want medical marijuana in their community. Um, you know, there's been times where people try and set up a basketball camp, or you know, there's all sorts of things that people try and do to, to block dispensaries from coming. But, um, uh, you know, in this particular case, you know, school bus stops, pediatricians' offices, those have not even, the Department of Public Health has not taken those, at least to my knowledge to date, as being uh, qualifying under their uh, catch all where children come in Congress. It's a long answer. I'm happy to chat with you after you any further questions about it. Let me just put on the response. Uh, two things. One, I'm one of the 68 percent that voted for medical marijuana, so I don't fall into that category. I would have voted against it had I been told that it would be a pediatrician's office. I think siting is important. I think where it's located in the town is important. Uh, it's, it's relevant to the discussion. Uh, also, I took it upon myself to uh, email the Department of Public Health as well and ask them that same question as to whether a pediatrician's office does fall within that buffer zone. And I received a response exactly opposite. So I think there's some disagreement at the Department of Public Health as to whether a pediatrician's office falls within this buffer zone. And I also think, too, there's disagreement um, from your interpretation with regards to whether that buffer zone is incorporated into the town uh, regulations. Uh, the land court, uh, the Superior the Land Court decision just recently stated that if a town is silent on a buffer zone, that buffer zone then is incorporated. If they have a buffer zone, then it's not incorporated. We are silent. Therefore, that buffer zone that's in the DBH regulations under the Lane Court decision is incorporated to the, to the town. Uh, also, town council has gone on public record as stating the peace field that that buffer zone is incorporated into our regulations. So, uh, thank you. It's Lawrence McKinney, um, 30 Closter Street. First of all, I'd like to thank the board here for taking such an amount of time on this issue. I looked over the materials, they were extremely uh, succinct for what your job is, which is to more or less worry about deciding rather than philosophical and medical terminology. But I want, I, I'm not going to that some of you, you are right, this has been going around for some time. It was over three years ago that Adam Chapdelaine and Carol Kowalski and Fred Ryan and a bunch of us got together at that time to figure out what part of this town such a dispensary could be located. It wasn't just last year, it was three years ago. I didn't see Chris at any of those meetings, but this kind of work has been going on steadily. The reason, the reason that I was there was because back in 1972, I was producing the drug abuse curriculum that was being used in the Arlington High Schools. Later on, we found the Cannabis Institute of America, and this was uh, the only curriculum that was ever selected by the U.S. government to have demonstrate impact in classrooms. We went on to get a patent for medical marijuana for pharmaceutical purposes, and there's absolutely no question that I know more about marijuana in any particular way than anybody else in this town. That being the case, I would again thank you very much for the time you've given us, and let's back to Mr. Corrardi. The whole thing about marijuana is like you're acting like it's plutonium. Let's be common sense. How many children approach a person asked for marijuana. Likewise, how many marijuana dealers attempt to sell them to children? It's like, you know, poisoning pages in the park. People laugh about this kind of stuff, but we still have, we still have laws on the books that would prevent you from buying a pipe. We went right to the Attorney General and said, well, we just can't get rid of all these stupid laws. We have to expect that some people have the common sense to realize that there really isn't the likelihood of a child being damaged by the existence of marijuana. Now, I have to admit, I have a slight bias. Because, what can I tell you, when I was in college, it happened to me. They approached me with one of those cigarettes. What can I tell you? I got into my studies more. My writing became more imaginative. And at Harvard, my grades went straight up. And I graduated from Lottie. And I am a victim. I became addicted to high grades and good writing. I won't tell you what happened after that, but I will tell you I can hold my breath for two minutes and not cough. It's not really a danger. So why are we niggling over these points? It's not a danger. And if you can find any evidence whatsoever that it is, I stand corrected. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Renee Moya, and my husband represents some of the financial advisors in the building that he would like to. Uh, with dispensary and uh, you keep referring to this as a medical bill.
building. It, it's not. It's uh, three floors. It does have some medical office. Have you gentlemen all been in the building? Yes. Okay, so you're familiar with the layout. Um, so there are other businesses in there that are not. It's not a medical building. It does have some medical offices in there. I saw that you had a nice diagram on the third floor and all the safety uh, implements that you plan on putting in to protect the third floor and people from coming in and coming out, but I have yet to see how you are going to prevent people from coming in that rear entrance to that parking garage, which goes to those businesses on the lower level, businesses on the first level, and the businesses on the second level, which are accessible by that elevator that goes from the ground floor to your floor, and the staircases in the rear, and the staircases in the front. I haven't seen anything that shows how you're going to get your clients without disturbing any of the other clients or wandering into other offices or different floors by mistake, whatever, and going directly to your office, which has cameras and security guards and everything else, to make sure that the people coming for their prescriptions are going specifically to your business. There's another concern that you haven't talked about <coughs> business hours because as business owners there, we know how we're going in and when the office is closed, and we have access all the time, and we have passcodes to use that passcode down in the basement. You don't talk about the other cleaning staff that the other businesses have, and when is it going to be open, how are those people going to get into the building if you decide, because you haven't given specific hours to anybody. You said you're going to base it on how clients want it and how all the businesses operate in there, but it's not a set building that closes at 5 o'clock and closes at 6 o'clock. So you haven't addressed any of those safety issues and how that's going to be handled. I'm also concerned as a business owner in there, two other concerns. If you never notified us that you were coming in. No one ever, no one ever knew until we saw a sign, we saw construction going on upstairs that this was going in. And whether you're for marijuana or not, I don't, I'm fine with legal marijuana, just so you don't think I'm one of those people that is against it. But in all honesty, if you go into your financial planner's office, would you want to smell marijuana? Would you want that associated, that stigmatism associated with your practice? We're in leases that we can't get out of for many years. You haven't addressed that. How are you going to make sure that your business doesn't impact our business? And the other businesses that aren't in your field. You haven't addressed that at all. And we don't have anywhere to go because we have to stay there. So you haven't addressed the parking situation because it is a problem. We know we've been in the building a long time, more than three years. We know the parking, the safety, the stigmatism, the dumpsters. You can't put a dumpster on site unless you take on some parking spots. You may not be aware of that with all respect, but you should know that. So there's lots of things that haven't been overcome. And there is, and again, I'm not against legal marijuana, but this is not the building for this place. There are other places for this. And again, it is not a medical facility. It is a building that some medical offices rent space in. And there's a difference. And you haven't addressed any of these issues that I've talked about. And I want to know how you're going to resolve those issues. Thank you. Uh, I, I hope I can do that. Yeah, let me just start by saying thank you for raising my concern. Uh, we need to hear that. Uh, in terms of the, the process, there is there's another stage, and that is a stage that requires having these annual neighborhood butter meetings um, with the health department of the local health board um, when we apply for that, that aspect, which would be after this. Um, and that is the opportunity for us to address all these concerns, and I think the absolutely can adequately address all the concerns. And I'll let Joseph go into just hitting some of them right now, and we can certainly um, we miss any of you know, I, I, if I miss any, please let me know. Um, the first is the smell. Um, not customary in a standard lease, um, but we added it to ours, is we have special carbon filters, so like that no smell emanates from our facility. In terms of the parking situation, I think I addressed it earlier. That one specifically because there's going to be a tenant in that space, whether it's us or whether it's someone else. There will be a tenant with people. I'm not concerned about, I mean, to cut you off. I know that you have a lease. I know how that garage operates. We've leased in that building for years. Well, we don't have that space. Uh, even all that, I know how all that works. And, and again, I don't know if you've done had a traffic study done or actually hired somebody to monitor. And, if I'm, and again, I said I don't know if you have, but to know that 
parking lot behind there, and again, you see that people are only going to be coming in for 10 minutes, and the tra and, and, and how that is going to affect that whole area over there, it's going to. I don't care if you put a fast food restaurant in there, it would affect it, because you have more people coming in that are currently there now, and that are coming in and out, and it's already congested space. Oh, I completely agree. There's going to be more people that are currently there now, because right now, there's no, there's no one operating there. But when someone operates, what's the added versus someone? Uh, if it was a medical office, a medical office and a professional office are very similar for, for usage. Um, it was uh, in the high 40s per day, and it would go up to about 56. Even uh, Institute of Traffic, Traffic Engineers uh, numbers, there was an additional eight vehicles per day that would uh, frequent the, the site. And that includes uh, the IT factors in, the employees, vendors, uh, customers, and the like, and it's... So just to clarify, you're saying combined with employees, drop-offs, patients, that's only going to increase? Based off of, a, of, of an occupied unit as a medical professional office to, to get to specialty retail, which is uh, what this is considered, there'd be an additional eight vehicles per day. So right now it's zero. Um, I understand. If, if, if this medical building is in the high 40s, we're eight more than that. Eight more, eight more. And, and, this, uh, and, and I appreciate all the comments and the questions, but I think there are some, some items that need to be answered. Uh, so at the moment, I'm going to speak on my own. <clears throat> I think what I would like to do at this point, because there are, there are some questions that need to be answered, uh, specifically the, the question of the actual process and the order in which it's been conducted, uh, board health permit, state permitting. Um, I, before we move on to any other public comment or before this board is prepared to take a vote, uh, I think we need to see the security and safety plan, uh, to see a breakdown of how staff will be hired. Uh, I think that the hours of operation are a significant concern, and I think there's uh, some discrepancy uh, between the number of visitors and vehicles per day. I'm also personally concerned about having sensitive vehicles in an underground parking garage. Uh, we have watched too many movies, but that's me. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think what I would like to do is ask that the applicants work with uh, the planning department to come back and be prepared to answer those questions at our next meeting that I think is going to take place on September 12th. No. Uh, At that point, I will allow for additional public comment, but I think these are some significant questions that, that need to be answered before we can move on and before I ask for, for a vote. We would be more than happy to, to come back at that time if the board desires. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could just clarify, so is security and safety plans, staff hiring practices, hours of operation, and uh, vehicles I think we need some, yeah, I think we need some clarification of people versus patients. Um, I think I'd also like to see how, as part of the security and safety plan, how the, the proposed, your proposed facility will impact the other businesses in the building uh, and how they'll impact the buyers. Detail your security cameras, where those will be placed, how they'll be used, how information will be stored, uh, how easily uh, public safety will be able to access that if need be, uh, especially during off hours, uh, when you be closed, there's an incident there, uh, and what sort of plan you worked out with Chief Ryan um, and then I'd also like an answer as to how this process has, has gone, uh, where you are in front of us before you have uh, all the approvals in line from, from the Board of Health and the State. Yeah, the, only, the only clarification might be if you can't give us kind of where cameras are going to be and that type of thing, that's fine. But we need to understand where you're going to be able to see. Okay? That's, that's, that's the part that's important. Other board members have concerns. Jim, could I ask a question to the chair?
there were other people here tonight who may not have had a chance to speak. If they have different concerns, could they contact planning so we can try and address? Absolutely, they can contact planning and, and have those addressed. Um, and they're, they're more than welcome. Uh, in fact, I would invite them to submit any comments in writing to myself, to, to the chair, and to come back on September 12th. And I'll allow for additional uh, comments at that point when some of these additional concerns have been addressed. But that, I'm going to continue this hearing on September 12th. I'm going to continue uh, the hearing uh, on the medical marijuana dispensary to uh, September 12th. I'll second. Nobody had any idea what was going to go into that kiosk or the retail building at that store. 
There were certain things we didn't want, certain things we thought would be great, and obviously didn't capture everything. Uh, the way you are proposing to amend the language would allow in that uh, building next door, and the car right now, if you change it the way it is, that if a McDonald's could come in without a special permit, without a public hearing, and be put in there. A nail salon is the gentleman's hand, a laundromat is the gentleman's hand, a beauty parlor is the gentleman's hand. Specifically, the things that the board didn't want in addition to special permit about six years ago. Uh, so I strongly recommend that you do not adopt the language that was written here. Certainly, um, it should, it should, it should uh, approve what this applicant is requesting. If there are other types of uses that you think would be good in either of those buildings, you certainly have them. But please don't make the changes that give blanket approval um, for, and the specific numbers are 6.08 personal service establishments and 6.13 that food establishments. And I want to correct something that was said earlier. Steward has pulled out of that building. They may still be paying rent, they may still have equipment in there, but um, sometime in the future, something else is going in there. And if you approve this, um, you open up this special permit um, you know, to a lot of potentially undesirable uses. I don't think these applicants want to call them. I don't think a lot of other people. And I think you need to look very carefully at the change in the language that has been And I would just emphasize again, um, add uses you think may need to be added, but would not in any way remove due to this blank removal of prohibition or blanket acceptance of um, you know, certain uh, use cases in some kind of Thank you. Get it, Mike. Um, that's a good point. Um, thank you. From my perspective, I think what we should do in changing the special permit condition is making the condition two parts and big. And it remains as is in respect to the retail office building, and that we just remove the words that both the kiosk, if we remove the words, both the kiosk and put in the third line mm -hmm. of the current one. And we leave the rest of it, and we call this 10A. And 10B will now say um, exactly what the new proposed one is, except that one will simply say, to this end, the developer and the board agree that the kiosk will reflect this intentional association with a bike way to distinguish it from other places. I mean, it's a little, it's a little clunky, but I think it works. Um, and I think that gets away from the concern of Mr. Loretti, which is a, a valid one, uh, and allows for a broader use in respect to using the kiosk, which I think is necessary if, if it's, in my mind, if, the uh, uh, enforcement officer is reading this like that, and this, in order for there to be a hot dog stand, or a, a, a still stuck on it, you know, what have you, then I think we need to change it for that. With all due respect to the original writing of this condition, the uses that are listed in here, many of them are not actually in the zone bylaws. Yes, so, okay. um, ice cream shop is actually not in use in the zone bylaw. So I think that having some of these changes happen that we suggest here could still occur, but we make it clear that Well it, it's nice because you still have the thing at the end that says, yeah, let's let's make them come back if uh, if they so want to do it with the way we do it. So we'll change it to A, exact a. same removing in the kiosk, and then we'll do B, exactly what we've got in the new language, but without in the retail office buildings. Yeah, yeah, with uh, association. Right. Board agree that the kiosk will reflect this. Right. And, you know, it's a little clunky because the acknowledgments are the same for both, but I think it, I think it works from, from a, a pure legal matter. Thank you for the comment. Can I just ask from the yes. building owner? Um, the original problem, why no one ever came forward, is because of, I guess, the interpretation of the way this was written. 
Um, and, and it was the issue about this accessory use with the ATM. And I think um, the way Mike Byrne was reading it was that uh, the kiosk had to be an accessory use. And I just want to make sure that gets the player by short. Mm -hmm. in, in this writing, the, um, the interpretation is clear. You know, maybe, maybe it just needs, uh, you know, the verb just needs to be um, clarified that it does not have to be an accessory use to the other building. That's how he was reading it, and that's why you know, it's taken so long. <laughs> and we, we deliberately eliminated the references to the ATM machines so that if yeah. somebody wanted to put an ATM machine in there, they would have to come back and go through the special process oh, right. in the kiosk. Right. However, the point that was made was that this is yeah. about the kiosk and the retail <coughs> office building, which I understand. Yeah. And so the uses in the retail office building should stay it's relatively it's safe, the same, right. but actually reflect what's in the <coughs> That's my <laughs> yeah, yeah, but my view is is if if that's desired in the bigger small space, yeah. then come on back sure. and, and we're happy to talk about it. Yeah. You know, what makes sense. So. Yeah, there should be basically a separate sentence regarding the ATM machine. That's what yeah. we need to right. on rereading it a number of times, figured out that then once we discussed it, we proposed to take it out completely because that would be an undesirable use. But I don't think we should change it. Here. Not to change it. Or now. Yes. Hi there, my name is Claudine Swartz, and uh, with my fellow community members in our office tonight, I've um, started the support hour tonight, something which has about 800 followers on Facebook, and I had the opportunity and um, to meet Teresa actually at another wall function that's based on our farm that she cited as an hour tonight, so kudos for that. So I'm here a little bit selfishly motivated because, like you, Mr. Lau, I don't necessarily take the bike path very often. So I support the use of the kiosk that hope will be so successful that Teresa and her colleagues will consider locating um, an additional site up in Arlington Heights, which we've been talking about already. And so this is a great opportunity for businesses to kind of test the waters a little bit without such a huge financial commitment. So great way of thinking. Um, I think generally if we can have more types of those opportunities, whether they be food trucks or things of that nature, we want to be creative. So I applaud your work and um, look forward to your success. Excuse me for just a moment. Can I ask that people stand up and this guy? I yes. can't see them otherwise. Yes. <laughs> well, my name is Karen Kumar and I live across the street from the kiosk. In this picture, I live right there. And I also support this um, business that you're opening. But there are three things I did want to ask about. One is, it's intended that bike paths, bike path people are your customers. There doesn't seem to be a pathway from the bike path to cross grass, so maybe that should be addressed. Secondly, um, I would like, is that it? not true? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 I was wondering what you're going to do. The hope was going to be grass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. What you're going to do in the winter, of course it was empty all this time anyway, but I just kind of want to know your plans for the winter. And then I have a little bit of concern. Uh, we did say with your, um, um, your other the owner that you're going to keep this area where people are going to be sitting clean. And you talked a little bit about, well, you have containers for people to throw their trash. But, you know, sometimes people aren't so good about that. And also, I can imagine some of the, the wonderful food being slopped onto the tables and stuff. So I, I think some consideration to hosing things down, making sure that things that are on the ground that are not in the containers right. actually get there. Yeah. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your response. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. And you've been forward to me because I live right around the corner of the house, so I'm probably going to go somewhere. Um, you know, Laura and I have gone um, to California and we're going to research at so many different locations in Oregon, rural Massachusetts. And one of the things that we came away from time and time again was places that weren't clean or that weren't keeping things clean are really repulsive to us. Um, so, so just first and foremost, as owners of a business, we want to make sure that it's clean and sanitary. And we completely agree with there's stuff on the ground. We're going to have to really do a good job throughout the day. And we feel like you know, both of us will be working at the business. Um, and we do believe that we can stay on top of it and have a, uh, 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 an environment of respect. Um, 
not belittle the pilot and our customers, first and foremost, but also we will take responsibility for it. So we really do plan to keep it as, as clean as we possibly can. And if you do ever see issues and something isn't going the way that you think it, it should, please come and talk to us directly with Teresa and Laura, and we'd love to talk with you about it. As far as um, there being an actual path, you're correct. There's a dirt, there's, you know, people ride their bikes right over to the dirt. I'm guessing that's what they would do. One of the things I did want to let you know, though, is that the front of the location of where people would be ordering is away from the bike path and in front of the building, um, where um, right before the, where the, you know, the tables are, so that we're not having a lot of people congregating or taking up space on the bike path. Okay, so come around there. Um, so the um, it would probably go across the grass, though. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, so we should take a look at that. Yeah. You know, I think um, if, if, they, if they do it the right way, they would come down to where those other <coughs> bike racks are, where the cement and ride along. I think coming from Arlington Center, it's a lot easier. Those coming from Lexington might be tempted to go across that dirt path. Not, not totally totally familiar with that specific area of the bike path, but I mean, it's your intent to park their bikes and then walk up to the That's correct. Yes. Right. So right. would do yeah. away with some of that issue and keep people in the Yeah, and they can yeah. also go around if they don't want to do it, but right. I mean, it's just a yeah. Okay. And as far as winter, I just would say that we're not planning necessarily to be open during the winter season. It still remains, you know, we need to discuss that with our, our potential landlord. Um, if it's a warm fall, we would love to push into that with some other options. But um, this will be our, our first year, and we will have to see, you know, how it goes. We have our um, we hired a contractor from Arlington who's ready to go. We hired a commercial architect for about six thousand dollars to make sure that we um, have a kind of shop that's going to be great for everybody. And we have to see how the seasons go. But right now, it's probably going to be Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Kathy Garcia, and I've been working with both Teresa and Laura um, for the last several months, and I applaud them for what they're doing. I support them explicitly, and I think that in this day and age, when there's so many empty storefronts and so many businesses leaving Arlington, they're really to be applauded for plugging away. I know they've been working on this for many months, and I'm hoping that the language that needs to be corrected is done so soon, because I know they could have opened few months back and really the summer is obviously the key time. So I'm really hoping that this will get pushed through quickly for the minutes. Thank you. Yes, I don't know if this is a benefit. I'm Carol. I operate for a bar where these two women come in and work diligently and hear the conversations and I support them. We have members now upwards of 120 that are in our space. They're always looking for a destination to walk for a healthy alternative. Um, they walk up to the heights, they walk as far as Stop and Shop and Whole Foods. Uh, and we have now, I think, six to 10 bike riders in our space that would take a bike ride down and would take one in the heights, I'm sure. So uh, I know we have a given population that are hankering for something like this, myself included. So I'd love to see them be able to get started as soon as possible. Whatever objections said would be would just whatever objections could be overcome. But I think they're going to be successful. Thank you. As landlord, I'm Lindbergh, I represent the landlord. So many people have come to us interested in this space. Uh, they sort of hit a roadblock with this language, and mm, well, you know, not going to do anything. These two ladies are tenacious, they are passionate, they, I mean, this business will succeed. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they really, they've gone the extra mile to, to bring this to you. Um, they've thought of everything, and I think it's a welcome addition to Arlington, to the Brigham Square community, to all our residents as well. We have 116 units over there, and we're 98% well, occupied, so I mean, I know that's another great source of uh, I can only speak for myself and reiterate some of the other members of the board said that I think they have the support that you heard tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, it is acceptable to see an empty storefront. It determines something that's a benefit. Someday I'll talk to you about 
Sure you can. Uh, <laughs> we're going to digress us. So I think that we've, we've heard everything that there is a year from the public. So I think this is a kind of little bit. Let me, I want to go over some of them. Sure. I think there's something else. Um, so to avoid this 18 situation, I think I understand now what the concern was um, with respect to the kiosk. Mm -hmm. Just being a standalone ATM without any. So I think what we need to do is actually add a little bit more language on the proposed language from the meeting now, which is we're going to need to steal some language from up here. So that now we say, uses shall be permitted under uh, Article 5, Section 5 of the Fourth Bylaw, Paragraph 608, uh, all of these different things, fast order food establishments, general retail, local retail, and offices, OK? Mm -hmm. But I think we need to also add, provided that, if such use is for an ETM, then such ATM be an accessory use by a commercial retail tenant of the retail building for convenience of its customers and not a separate standalone use. So in other words, we need to say in respect to the kiosk, it, see that's still up in the big building. Mm -hmm. We don't need it there really, but let's just leave it there because it doesn't do any harm until someone wants to come into the big, big building. But what we need is for this to now go into our new B that's all about the kiosk. Mm -hmm. So we need to, because I'm assuming that an ATM is general retail and local retail, right? It's got to fall into one it's of those two. Exactly. Yeah, so, so we need okay. to put the caveat in there about the ATM, I think, to avoid, you know, you guys are going to be there for years. I know you are. <laughs> but just in case, uh, we don't yeah, need to have to throw any space. Yeah, exactly, and take on the, new, the old CVS space. So that's, yeah. that's where you're going. Um, but anyway, I think I think if we make that happen, that would be helpful. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, yeah, I've got them here. And I can see them. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, yes, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, so we don't want the kiosk to be an ATM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. No. So, it can only be a kiosk, an ATM, if the other thing is a bank. But in other words, if they put a bank in the main retail office building, they would be allowed to have an ATM. ATM, exactly. At that main building. At that main building. Okay. Exactly. If they're not. <laughs> no, yeah, if you're still in the main building. Yeah. 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 Well, no. Not eliminate the kiosk, but. No, no it just, it does say, it does say if they're not there, then the kiosk could be an ATM. So the accessory to the main building. Well, that's where I think we might. Well, we need to because I don't, I don't know that we want the kiosk to become an ATM. Regardless of the regardless user. of it, it's supposed okay, to so be that's something that's related to the bikeway, and so. But that is different than what this says. Correct. Because what it says now is that it can be an ATM so long as the other thing is a big bank. If the other thing is a big bank, so well, I I will give you the, uh, the, the, the we don't have the larger original permit with us, but we actually do have. Oh. We do. We have the original, original part of this, which talks about the relation. I think that this was, that there's some troubling ways that this was originally constructed because I'm not sure they intended to ever say that they wanted to have an ATM in the US. Even though it's written the way it's written. Yeah, I was there. I don't, I, don't I, I think the intention was that it was an active bike path related. Yeah. We may have allowed that. I think we were concerned. My guess is, my guess is, is, is. We wouldn't be saying it's not allowed. We'd be saying that yeah. if they come back here for a special permit, right now it's not exactly written that way. So if they want to come back and have a special permit for the ATM, yes. That's not the way this is written exactly. So this is one of the challenges that the inspector has had in, under, in trying to understand what exactly the special permit condition of the tenant is saying. Right, because we're trying to look at me. Just to be we're trying to avoid spot zone. Well, right. we're also trying to make sure that there's clear direction, not just to this applicant, but to other potential applicants yeah, in the I, future. Okay, but I'm, I'm less concerned about the future applicant at this meeting tonight. And I think that what should happen is, is the landlord should come work with staff mm -hmm. and figure out the correct language to use on A. On A. Right? On the, on the actual uh, special condition with respect to the retail. Could we find out because the applicant is here? <laughs> the owner is here. Yeah. What their involvement was in constructing this 
They weren't in. They weren't in. But because it was, it was, that's right. It was, it was, uh, a hardware store in there, and then the hardware store could sell brakes there that were a special part of it, whatever they sold. So we, we realized that that might be the only way it could get leased, or one way it could get leased. This is actually much, much better than uh, we could have expected, where you have a separate tenant, and then you have a separate use that's really bike-oriented and everything. So Unfortunately, the language, uh, the language did, yeah, so I would potentially recommend that I think you should have yielded the special permit yeah. for the big building and try to, try to we, figure it out. We actually, we, that's what we've done here. We reopened the special permit. So the whole, the whole thing. Hey, I understand, but the point that was made at the meeting was the right one, which is no one wants McDonald's to go into there. Right. I think, right? So from, in the, in the kiosk, it would be impossible. You'd be able to flip a couple burgers or whatever else, or hot dogs. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I think it was clear before because it did say it couldn't be a, uh, yeah, you know, a, you know, like a McDonald's or a chain. Yeah. chain thing, yeah. a traditional yeah. chain, fast food. Fast food's got a traditional chain store. I think it was clear that it couldn't be that. Right. So I think it's fine the way it was. I think the only issue For the main, was for the main building. For the main building. For the main building. Right. Right. So we should exactly. So I think so the main building was fine. Exactly. We didn't have a problem. We just have to break this accessory use. It's just that word, accessory use, that term, accessory use. <laughs> Right. So the, the main building was fine. Mm -hmm. I think we have a good, we have clarity on this, how we would want the condition to be just for the PS. So now we're kind of going back to what the original condition would be in relation to the bigger retail office. Could, could right. we eliminate the, can we say no ATM in the kiosk? We could say no ATM. That's that's a lot. I mean, that doesn't get us into any legal trouble. I. That's a, that was always the reading of this original condition by the inspector. Yeah. So that the, I don't understand why that would not. That's not the way it's exactly written, and that's what this confusion has arisen in the past many times in the past four years. Mike, why do you want to change the? for the main building. Oh, I don't care about the main building. No, I, I'm saying, you, no, what I, what I said was if, if, if the main building can't be rented out or has difficulty renting out the main building, then come back and ask us for what you want it to say with respect to the main building. And I'm just saying we should be keeping these two things separate. You've got the green building and you've got the PS. Yep. And so, so I was just trying to avoid but, but the thing I was trying to avoid, which I don't think is a bad thing, is to say that kiosk can't just be an ATM so, all on its own, right? Because because it doesn't, I mean, there's enough ATMs, right? I know I get it. You're saying it could be if the big buildings are bad. No, but yes, yes, I'm saying, well, that's that's how I read the original yeah. special condition. The original special condition said to me that the kiosk could be an ATM if the big building is a bank, okay? And I think that, then all I was trying to do was put the exact same language that was already in here with respect to ATM only, okay? That's, that's fine. Down here, that's okay. See, we I, hope to I don't think that, you can't, inspector can't have a problem if we say, provided that if such use is for an ATM. I mean, you can't really say. That's an amendment to the to, existing current no, condition. No, it would be down, on the, it'd be down here. here. Well, that's fine. What do people think? I mean, I'm not trying to railroad anybody. No, I, I, I do understand. Fine. You're right. Yeah, I do. I, I do understand that the having that use as a standalone ATM is antithetical yeah. to the idea. Yeah. Yes. That this be a yes. Site. Yes. Totally agree. Yeah. 
the, the only bike way specific use, yes. sorry, bike way yeah. associated use. Correct. Yeah. I think that that's, 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 that's a good right yeah, 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 I know that's yeah. exactly what we have. It's still we have a little window here who's committed to, to that idea, right. and presumably whatever tenant they pull it to the sewer. I think that's, that's a great change. Okay, so let's, let's do that. And yeah, and if you could talk to the answer. We were being I was going to say, so that would definitely satisfy Mike, right? This would all satisfy Mike. We might reviewed this language before, but if we add that one clause, because it's only about an ATM. Any problem with that? It does yeah. not relate to your business. Right. Most importantly, yeah. Right. Right. Which is really weird. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but we really do appreciate you yeah. taking the time because we don't want to have to. So this no. has been a long process. No. We, so we, thank you so much. We don't want to either. So we want to make sure. Yes. Yeah, let me, let me make a, I'll make a motion. Uh, I move uh, to approve, first off, the, um, uh, the amendment of the special permit condition number 10. Um, the first uh, amendment being to um, put in the letter A before the first special condition of that, to remove the words both the kiosk and in the third line leave the remainder and then uh, add a part B to section 10 so B that reads as follows and I'll give this to you Jenny the developer designed the project to acknowledge comment and incorporate the bikeway and bikeway users in the development to this end the developer and the board agree that the kiosk will reflect this intentional association with the bikeway to distinguish it from other places. Uses uh, uh, shall be permitted under Article 5, Section 504 of the Bylaw, Paragraph 608, Personal Services Establishments, 613, Vast Order Food Establishments, 616, General Retail, 617, Local Retail, and 620, Offices, comma, provided that if such use is for an ATM, then such ATM be an accessory use by a commercial retail tenant of the retail building for convenience of its customers and not a separate standalone use. And it goes down to, if the applicant seeks to incorporate a use not specifically allowed herein, it shall submit a request to reopen the special permit. Just one amendment yeah. would be to take that, instead of provided that, yeah. as such, just cross out provided that and it's Okay. Um, it would say actually it says usage shall be permitted, if the following usage. uses, and then period, and then the next sentence is if such use is uh, an ATM. It. So that's a whole separate sentence. Okay. So one of the problems that's been happening is got it. it seems to get all mixed up together. That sounds great. So okay. okay. Thank you. I'll second it. But no, he's in the middle, right? Or is that uh, you want to do that one? You want to do two, uh, two votes? We'll, we'll two votes. amend it. Uh, let's amend this and then we'll get started. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, right. I second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, right. Okay. Okay. And then I move uh, to approve the uh, special permit request or application, sorry, of. Uh, U.S. Reef uh, Brigham Square uh, Mass. Docket number, number uh, 3386. Um, uh, as uh, presented to this meeting. Second. All in favor.
presented to us in respect of uh, the next 10 months uh, at the uh, centers. Of Okay. Active today, okay. <laughs> according to the lease. Right. They are actively working to get it out of the space. Good. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sign away. Right. Okay. Thank you. It was kind of like before. Thank you. Aye. Thank you for your patience as well. Sticking around. Anybody else have anything? <laughs> Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks. All right. Very quickly, uh, there's been some staffing updates. And the last man standing is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear me. Wow, this is, well, this is the last test. He's already proved, he proved himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> kicking and screaming. Oh, this is not so long. Yeah, yeah. it's up. It's up. <laughs> so, Matt, yeah. you're more than welcome to just introduce yourself to the whole board. Well, I'm Matt Strasburg. Um, I'm coming from Ashland, Mass. So this is really a different ball game. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Um, it's a really fantastic community. Jenny, I know it's fantastic. I look forward to working with her and with you guys. And this is great. So thank you all. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. So Matt is taking on what was Joey's position and is now senior planner. And he'll be working with uh, a number of different committees, lots of different projects, helping with some of these ARB reports, uh, the CBA memos and reports, a lot of other special projects. Yes. 
Well, I think we've got a minister for Yeah, he's still here with us. But uh, before we move too far, can I just make a little bit of a suggestion on when the new economic development person comes in? Yes. That you tackle part A now of the rhythm because, you know, I want the inspector to be. I want the inspector to be okay with what goes in. It's just that I think, you know, I, I, I kind of want to, personally, I'd want to do a little bit more of an analysis of what's expected in that space um, and, and have that conversation. Okay. It does. And I, by the way, I'm open to any feedback that you might have for me regarding the economic development coordinator. And if you have suggestions yeah. about what, you know, your expectations or things you'd like to see them do, and any feedback on how the last three years of having that, it's a newer position right. in town, the last three years have gone, I guess four years have gone. So please feel free to ask. Well, four years. Yeah, because I have a chance to respond to the person. Okay. So. Okay. Mitch. I didn't have any comments. I have comments. Motion to approve uh, the minutes. Second. Uh, July 25th. Second. 